Hey everybody, Freddie here with another video. This is video number two in the series of BCDR, which is Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery. Today we're going to be focusing on Azure Storage. Primarily, we're going to be talking about Blob and the different options that you have, such as LRS, GRS, and we're going to be focusing also on private endpoints. What happens to your storage when you are using private endpoints and a disaster hits and you are using GRS, for example. So we're going to be focusing deep into those subjects and I hope you learned something um, since we're talking about disaster recovery and typically that involves disasters. I want to take a minute to um, tell the people in Los Angeles, uh, the people that are being affected by the fires, that our hearts and prayers go out to them. And I hope this situation gets better soon since the devastation is just incredible at the moment. So, you know, it's hard to see when a disaster hits and it's hard to talk about disaster recovery when a disaster is taking place. But today we're going to be focusing on storage and we're going to be focusing on how to prepare for disasters and how you can protect your data. So again, thank you so much for being part of this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment in the section down below. That helps me with the Google algorithm. And for now, let's get to it. First of all, we cannot start a BCDR series without talking about the basics. We need to level the field, as we say, to make sure that we are all on the same page as far as the concepts and what are we going to be talking about. So let's start by talking about the Microsoft Global Network. So we need to talk about this because we need to understand the regions. So when we talk about a region, we talk about a collection of data centers within a latency defined perimeter. For example, US West. There's also the concept of paired regions, which we will talk a little bit more about in a second, <clears throat> which is a set of Azure regions that are predefined um, and Microsoft provides out of the box cross region replication between the regions. This is very important concept. Pair regions is what Microsoft uses when you select storage such as GRS. Um, what Microsoft does <clears throat> Excuse me, what Microsoft does is it takes the data and it replicates it from your primary region. Let's just say you select US West, US West as your primary region. When you select GRS storage, Microsoft automatically um, replicates the data to the paired region, which would be US East. So that's there's a concept of pair regions. So when you look at this, West US 3 and East US, uh, let's just let's just say that those are pair regions, what happens is that the data is replicated to the other region. That's a paired region. That's something that Microsoft does automatically. There is nothing you need to do to set it up. So that's a pair region. The next concept that we need to talk about is the types of storage that are available. In a single region, you have this here on the left-hand side, LRS, which is you have three copies of your data. So we're talking about blob. You have three copies of your data, but in one region and in one data center. That is the key here. So if you're talking about disaster recovery, there is no disaster recovery because it is in one region, one data center. You still have your three copies, but you do not have it replicated to another region. When we talk about ZRS, that is um, data that is stored in multiple zones in one region. Again, um, <clears throat> still being protected because you have three copies in three different physical locations, however, still in one region. For disaster recovery, that's just another level of, of, of protection. When we start looking into the actual thing about disaster recovery as a concept, typically we wanna put the data in two different regions, two different physical regions that are separated by miles away. So typically in California, uh, companies were creating disaster recovery sites in Arizona. The reason for that is because in California, we have, a, we have earthquakes, so we have faults. So we have a big fault that is called the San Andreas Fault. So if a disaster were to happen that involves an earthquake, you wanna be outside of that fault, which typically puts you in Phoenix and places like that. So this is when you start looking at things like RAGRS. What this means is that you have GRS. We're not talking about RA yet, but let's just talk about GRS. What 
GRS does is it takes your copy, so you have your three copies in one region, and it replicates it to another region. And it makes three copies in another region, which typically is more than 300 miles away. Uh, but the latency is, is such that because it is a paired region, Microsoft sets the infrastructure in a way that the latency is going to be it's going to be good. So you have six replicas, two regions. Um, that's typically how it works. The, the, the replica and the region number two, when you're using GRS, not GRSRA, but GRS, it means that the replica in region number two is just for failover purposes. You're still using your primary region all the time. You access in and out, data in, data out from your primary region the data in your uh, secondary region is just for re replication and redundancy and failover. You cannot do anything with it. Now, if you do want to do something with it, and you can go with the RA, G-R-S-R-A. G-R-S-R-A means that you're going to have a read replica in the other side. So now you can do in, out from your primary region. But you can also do read access from your secondary region. Now, this one is it's, it's a good concept to know because if you have a database, for example, and you want to replicate it to, to the secondary region and you want to be able to use that replica as a read only, you can do so with a GRS RA. I will show you once we get in the portal. But what happens is that you get your primary region, you end up with one endpoint here. Just say, you know, storage, whatever, whatever. And then you also have a secondary endpoint. Endpoint is just a URL that you use to access this data. You have, you end up with two URLs, one for the primary, which is read and write, and you end up with another URL that you can access for read only access. This is a key because if you want to use things that allow you to read. Let's say you want to read from multiple places. Um, you can implement things like Traffic Manager, for example, because we're talking about public endpoints. We're not talking about private endpoints yet. We're talking about public endpoints. You can set up Traffic Manager that can do some, you know, some geography checks and things like that and send the data to the closest one. Um, so there's things that you can do because there are pro uh, public endpoints and you end up with two. Then you have another one, which is the RAGZRS, which adds a lot more redundancy because not only you are in two different regions, you're also divided into different zones. So this just adds a lot more replicas to your, a lot more redundancy and protection. Of course, the price goes up. Uh, the LRS is the lowest because again, there's three copies in one data center. And as you go up, then it goes higher and higher. And the RAGZRS is the one that gives you the most protection. However, is the one that is also the most expensive. Okay, so let's jump to the portal and check this uh, storage account that I have here. Um, FMD test account is a storage account in West US 2. As you can see here, it says West US 2. The things that we want to look at West US 2 and we want to look at the type, the replication, it says it's geo redundant storage. So what does that mean? Geo redundant storage just means that there is some redundancy happening. So if I go to the data management section here under the, um, on the left hand side, I can see that my storage is geo redundant storage, GRS. Uh, by the way, here is where you can change the GRS. You can add read access geo redundant storage, RA GRS, or you can change it to a GZRS. So you can change the, the redundancy here. The other thing you can see here is the location. Uh, the primary is in West US 2 because that's the one that I chose as the primary. And the paired region is West Central US, which is the secondary. This one I did not choose. Microsoft chose this one for me when I said GRS because it is, this is the paired region for West US 2 in this case. So that's what that, that tells me. The other thing that I want to look at is the endpoints, when I have GRS as my choice, I have a uh, endpoint that is created, which is this one right here for the blob service. 
here is my endpoint fmd test account dot blob dot core dot windows dot net and also what I want to look at is the secondary endpoint I don't have a secondary endpoint even though I have GRS and the reason I don't have a secondary endpoint is because I don't have read access to the secondary so in other words the secondary is there but it's only available when there is a failover so that is the only time that that endpoint will be visible to me so if I go back to the redundancy here I can click on prepare for failover this is a manual process that needs to be done there is also an option that you can select here which is the prepare for failover so if we click on this prepare for failover right now is the option is only unplanned failover so it tells you when your last sync was the synchronization was um, today at um, 7.42 a.m. So let's go ahead and close this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change it to geo-redundant read access. So when I change it to this and I say save, then what that's going to do is going to give me the option to have an endpoint for read access at the secondary region. So now if we go to the endpoints, so now I have a primary endpoint, which is this, which is my read write access. And I also have a secondary endpoint, which is my read only access. Okay, so I promised you that we were gonna go deeper into this conversation. So let's go back to the portal and I'm gonna show you how this whole failover takes place. So when we're looking at the um, at the portal here, what we're looking at is the primary endpoint and the secondary endpoint. The reason we have that is because, as you remember, I changed this to GRSRA, which gives me a secondary endpoint. If I didn't have the RA, I would only have a primary endpoint. There is a secondary endpoint anyway. It's just not visible because I'm not able to get to it. So if I do, if I open a terminal window here and I ping the primary endpoint, which is the FMD test account dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. I do get an IP address and the IP address that I get is this 20.209.101.67. That is the IP address of that endpoint. The IP address of the secondary is the name is the same except it has a dash second there and if I ping that then I get a different IP address I get a 2064.103 so it depends on which one you're you're pinging that's the one that you're going to be getting so this is this is very important because when you are doing the failover if you have firewall rules that are pointing to IP addresses or if you're allowing IP addresses to the primary endpoint when there is a failover you have to update those those rules or you have to set up some type of uh, tag or service tag or something that allows both uh, the connection to both because otherwise you get the, the rules are not going to work so just keep that in mind that the IP addresses are not the same so what happens when you do a failover so let's go back to the portal and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the primary endpoint. So we're going to ping this primary endpoint. And we're going to see that it's the 10167. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to come back to um, redundancy. And we are going to prepare for failover. So unplanned failover, that's fine. And we're going to type yes and failover. So now how long this is going to take? Well, the, um, the answer to that question is it really is based on DNS because the DNS are going to get updated with the, with the name. You don't have to change the name. The name is going to continue the exact same way. The only thing that is going to change is the IP address because it's going to be pointing to the secondary. So now let's go look. Sometimes the DNS though, DNS does take a while. There's a TTL with a time to live. So that one, 
uh, that's how the computers are able to see how long they have to keep this name in cache. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's longer. So it really depends on that. But let's go ahead and go back to the portal and look. Okay, so we have this, um, still 67, 67, 67. And I better pause the video because this is going to take a while. I don't want to sit here and for you to be waiting. So I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. Finally, it finished. It took about 10 minutes for my failover to take place. Now, this doesn't mean that it's working 100% because if I go back to this, um, my IP address was this, 101.67, and I'm still pinging that IP address. Oh, now it's changing. Now it changed to 2064. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. 2064.103. So the failover took about 11 minutes for me. Uh, this doesn't mean that this is going to be exactly the same for you. It, uh, according to the documentation, it says that it, it is based on the amount of data that you have. So I would say do a test before you, you actually do the, the, the failover just to see how it's going to, how it's going to, wow, how it's going to work for you. Okay. So let's look at what else happened. Let's go back to the portal here. Um, when, when the failover took place, um, so now it says that my primary region is the West Central U.S., which is fine because it used to be the secondary. Uh, the only other thing that happened is the, the, the storage itself was converted to an LRS. So LRS is the new storage type. And this is, this is just how it works. After the redundancy, then the, the storage is turned into LRS. So now how does fail back take place? There is no button that you can press to do a fail back. The only way that you can fail back is to do a manual process where you can either copy it using AC copy, copy it back to the, to the original region once the region comes back up, or what you can do, let's go back to the portal and convert this back to geo redundant storage. Now is the opposite. Now the West Central is the primary, West US2 is the secondary. And when you're ready to do a fail back, then you can do that failover again. And now it's gonna be the opposite way that it's gonna fail back. Like I said, there is no fail back button. So this is the way that you can fail back. Some of the caveats that you have to keep in mind when doing this failover is that if you have GRS, then your storage is not going to be available for a short period of time while that failover is taking effect or that taking place. So there is some, some things that you have to take in consideration, some outages, if you would. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can convert it to an RA, GRSRA, which means that you do have access to the secondary region by pointing to the secondary link um, in the meantime. So that gives you that option and you're able to get access to the data while the failover is taking place. However, it's, um, you know, you, you still have to take in consideration that once that failover happens, you do not have access to that secondary link anymore because now the secondary is the primary. And that, my friends, is how Azure Storage GRS works. And if you add GRS RA, you can see that you have a little bit more flexibility. I hope you learned something. I know this video is probably a little bit longer than I expected. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you jump to the next video. The next video is where we start talking about private endpoints. What happens when you have this type of configuration? But now you add another little detail, which is private endpoints. What happens then? So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for staying until the end of this video. And I'll see you in the next one.